Hill shepherds Amanda and Clive Owen live on one of the most remote farms in the country, where they're raising their nine children. They're all smiling, they're all happy, and I'm really proud of them. We're continuing to follow this extraordinary family as they take on new challenges. Clem is ready to go to school now. And take over a dilapidated farmhouse. There's a massive hole in the roof. I couldn't believe it when I bought it. I was like, oh, what have I done? As the kids grow, we'll witness the highs and lows of their remarkable childhood. There's another one crossing here. Oh, my God. How's that the name, Mum? And see how the family tackles their traditional and extreme way of life by pulling together. There you go, shit, little lad. Raven's in her second year at university. Reuben has an apprenticeship. Miles, he's great with his little sisters. Edith is now the mother hen. Violet, she's very hands-on. Sid's big dream is to be a farmer. Annie, she's the adventurer. Clemmy will take on any challenge. And Nancy, the baby of the family. This week, after months at home together, the Owen family gets ready for the return to school. Three pairs of trousers. Dim, 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 dim. I mean, obviously, they need to go back to school. I'm not denying it, but it'll be a bit funny without them. Five-year-old Clemmy leaves the farm behind for her long-awaited first day. Have a lovely day, guys. Tell me all about it, Tilly. Bye. Bye. Clive adjusts to life without all the kids on the farm. Oh, it's quieter, absolutely, without them guys at home. It is, it's very strange. And Amanda and Clive tackle Autumn's jobs with only one helper in tow. That's that to me, Mum. I'll pass it to you. Grab them last few. I'm heading for the hills. If I drop any off, pick them up. The family's remote home in the north of the Yorkshire Dales is surrounded by miles of steep and rugged moorland. It's early September, and autumn has arrived at Ravenseat. The family has spent lockdown working together on the farm. Come on, you lot. And everyone's mucking in with a final job before the kids start school tomorrow. We've had a very, very extended Easter, summer, just massive holiday, basically. The children have been at home for, for months, and they've really enjoyed it. They've done a little bit of school work, but basically, they've been out in the sunshine. Back out! Look back! Ahead of winter, any lame sheep in the flock are treated with antibiotic spray. Good luck. Somebody run and shut gate, Miley. Right, let's go in and do these sheep. There's some of them lame. Let's get in there and do them. Come on. I can see one in the middle. Did you see it, Clem? Uh, I this way. Yeah, but we need to catch up with which sheep first, so you need to get you need to get your eye in. I want you to look for ones that look like they've got a sore foot. Think you can do that? Yeah. That one, that one, Dan. He's lame. So let's squeeze them up so we can catch one. <laughs> Good lass. Like all the Owen children, five-year-old Clemmy has spent her preschool years learning on the farm and isn't afraid to get her hands dirty. Well, look, you got a little saw. No, look. It's like white and soft. It's like it's it like, hurts him only getting that look. It's like athlete's foot. I know it hurts sheep. It stings him a little bit. Perfect. Hello. Absolutely on the spot. Anything that causes them pain is not good, so you have to treat it. But sheep, sheep are very prone to foot rot, especially in these wet conditions, and so it's a constant battle we fight all the time. Oh, that's brilliant. That one there. That one's lame on the back foot. The one at the front. Now let's look at your fingers. It's a sign of being a farmer if you've got blue spray on you. Last year, Amanda opted out of sending Clemmy to reception class. But tomorrow, she'll be joining her siblings on the school bus. Catch you. All the children have uh, started school when they've been five. I've never pushed them to go any earlier. And we had considered that maybe Clemmy did need to go to school earlier because she seemed wise beyond her years. 
but no, the right thing was again to hold off and give her an extra year at home. She's learned so much, she's really, really come on and I feel like now she is ready to go. We're all fixed. All fixed. Well done, thank you for that. The family bought Tony the Pony over a year ago, and Clemmy has grown particularly attached to her beloved miniature Shetland. Of course, it'll be a wrench for her to leave Tony, but I think in this year up to her being five, she's kind of matured a bit more, and I can reason with her better. So, so yes, the extra year, it definitely was the the right the right move. Clem is teaching younger sister Nancy, nicknamed Nikki, how to care for Tony. And she's a very strict teacher. Yeah. Now get a handful and shake it around and tell me. Well, I know how to take lots of. Yeah. Good. I tell them to sink, 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 and sink, and scoop them up. Tick. Put it in his beggy bag. Nikki, next thing. Oh, and. I don't know how to do that poop thing. You want this really fast and scrape it up, OK? Go and go. Yeah. You hold that. And I'll hold this. You scoop it up. <laughs> there, now get the other piece. Get the other piece there. There you go. You take that. And I'll take that. Wait. She's very yeah, protective yeah. over Tony, and to be honest with you, I don't know how we ended up being so lucky to get a pony like him. This way. I think we've been really fortunate in that he is as devoted to her as she is to him. Come on, Joe. Dinner time. Come on, it's dinner time. So, Nikki, shake it. Shake it, and then pat it back to me. Shake it, and... Come on. Yeah? A little bit more than past me because it gets hard. Come on, it's dinner time, get in your stable. Nikki, Nikki, look at me. Nikki, Nikki, can you look up Tony when I'm at school? A bit more for your toes? Nikki, can I, can you look up Tony when I'm at, when I'm at school, Nikki? Mm-hmm, good. Right, yeah, I'm in bed. <laughs> night. Night, night. Mm. <laughs> night. <laughs> At the close of every summer, it's become an Owen tradition to ditch the wellies and dig out the hand-me-downs. Come on, kids. Should be in here, Clammy. It's that time. It's that time of year when we need to be finding some school uniform. This is definitely mine. Smells a bit yeah. funny. I think it smells of mothballs. That was mine last year. It's too small for me now. It's well, exactly. Six. So this was yours last year. So if it was yours last year, it's either yours now, Anis, or yours, Sid. But the point is we don't need to buy anything new. Right, well, anyway, keep sorting through, cos you need more than one thing. You need some spare stuff. And I'm going to go and make myself a cup of tea. Ten-year-old Violet's taking charge of equipping her younger siblings. All right. Here is the lucky trouser lot. Three pairs of trousers. I want to quickly fire them all out at different times, so you've got to be ready to catch more <laughs> if you catch it. Dim, 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 dim. <laughs> catch it. Two skirts. This is Tilly's flower. This is Annie's. I'm going to mix them up. Catch them. <laughs> Sid, try it on. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> this is Tilly, so Tilly. That's a little dress. What else have we got? Uh, this. Ah, that's a purple polo shirt, so that can be worn underneath. But I like the white ones better. Do you? They look quite smart. But we can put it there for a spare one. So, are you excited to put on your school uniform? Yeah, but school, school. Yeah. What? What does that mean? Don't go. You don't want to go? But it'll 
you'll be all right. It'll be exciting. You've been at home all summer, haven't you? And you've had all this time with Tony. So, I know. And Nancy has said she's going to help look after your pony. And he'll, he'll be there when you go to school on the morning, and he'll be there when you come back, won't he? Hmm? Yeah. Hmm? So it'll be all right. Shall I go and take it to the washing machine? I would love you to take it to the washing machine. Come on, let's get it all in the washer. Yeah. And we'll get you all looking spick and span, won't we? Not gonna wash one. Yeah. Yep, take it all through. Brilliant. Clemmy's bound to be nervous. So uh, it's a big thing, it's her first day at school. But I'm just playing it down. Because I'm gonna miss them. I mean obviously they need to go back to school, I'm not denying it, but it'll be a bit funny without them. The weather's kind of changed now. Um, and you can feel the night's drawing in as well. The leaves are coming off of trees, all the rest of it. So they need a little bit more going on in their lives. And uh, particularly for Clemmy, she's got to the stage now where she's ready to learn. As dusk settles over the Yorkshire Dales, the Owen family is turning in for the evening, ready for the big day tomorrow. On Raven Seat Farm, the whole family's up early getting ready for their first day back at school. Though having just started his apprenticeship, 16-year-old Reuben won't be joining his siblings this year. So you're not, you're not going, Reuben? The last time the school, your school bus went, you were on it, my friend. Huh? Yeah. So is there not a little bit of you wishing you were getting on the bus with your mates on that back seat again? Yeah, that bit, but not actually getting to school. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, well, he's in house, Dad. I know. No. Oh, well. Today is five year old Clemmy's first time away from the farm without her parents. Better? Yeah, better. A big thing for him going back today, isn't it? Like, it, you know, what a massive change from what they've been doing. I think, I think they're ready to go back, though. Weather's gone a bit rubbish, and I think they need to see the friends now. And they've grown. Yeah. I mean, we haven't noticed that they've grown, but they have, because they've all oh, had to move up a uniform. Yeah, that's right. Clemmy's been muttering about not wanting to go, but I'm not. I'm just not. Get, yeah, I'm not engaging. No. In that conversation. No. <laughs> I'm expecting to go. No bother. You never know with Clembo. Tilly, you look so smart. This morning, it's first up, best dressed, and it seems eight-year-old Sydney may have slept in. Well, well, it's... Crikey. Let's have a look what we, what we got there. Ooh, the... the this uh, is... Hey, up. The two ties. <laughs> Sid, are Sid, you... Sid, you've grown. Tight kind of look. Them. I think I'd go and put a bigger pair on if I were you. I don't have any. No, go and have a look for some more trousers. I did. You wouldn't believe that you had six months to find your school sure. trousers, would you, really? You are all right, Eid. <laughs> yeah. These are not on shoes. Nope. Good lad. I'm ready. You're ready. Mm -hmm. Well done. There's some toast in. Then. But okay, it's stuck. Tony's in the house. Tony's coming in the house. Oh, look who's come to say goodbye to you. Look at that. He must know it's first day. He must have heard you talking yesterday. He says, I'll go and see you off. I bet he's missing me. Does he know where you're going? No. The school well. I'm going to school well. School well. You're going to miss him? But he'll be um, waiting for you when you come back. Yeah? And are you excited? Good lass. Huh? Right, go on, eat your breakfast quick before he's... Because he'll be eating it. Yes. I'll test if he wants one. Yay! <laughs> he likes cornflakes. <laughs> That in my bag. Clem, when she goes to school, she has the added advantage, of course, that she's got brothers and sisters. She's got her siblings at school, so they'll keep her right, or she'll keep them right. They'll show her what's what. School uniform is a far cry from Clem's usual farm gear, and this new outfit is causing her a bit of confusion. And I'll do a colour. Thank you. Are they dog colours? No. No. They're not dog colours. They look like dog Edith and Miles have already set off for secondary school, and the younger Owens are now waiting for their bus. 
How are you doing, gang? How are you doing, Tilly Bam Bam? Yeah, good. Lots of kisses this morning. Yeah. Will there be kisses tonight? Can you see a bush, Tilly Bam Bam? Yeah. Where are they? Yeah, you just been. Uh, where? Where? I can't see you no bush. You saw its lights, wait. Oh, yes, I see. Yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. Steady, don't whoa. fall. Have a lovely day, guys. Yeah. And we'll see you tonight. Tell me all about it, Tilly. Tell me your mum. Bye. Love you, Dad. Don't Bye. tumble. Don't run. Bye-bye, Dad. Bus driver Darrell has been driving to the family's farm for 13 years. He's taken every one of the Owen children to school on their first day. Well, because it's your first day, this is this is this is where you'll sit all the time for now. Cool. So your seatbelt, my little help. Yeah. So. Right, put your, you can put your bag on the floor down there, don't you? Yeah. Put your yeah. bag down. So all the way around, and then you see this thing down here. You this see that red thing? See that? You have to push it in there until it push clicks. Push it in there. Push it in. Give it a push. That just clicks. Oh, well done. So and leave it's... it on all the way till school, and I'll tell you when you can take it off. Good girl. It's almost an hour's journey along winding country lanes from the family's remote home to the school gate. They are very long days, but, you know, you take the rough with the smooth if you live out in the sticks. It takes a long time to get anywhere. But, but they handle it. It's all part of the, the independence. I'm actually going to like it at school. Have a good day. Hold Tilly's hand. Till, you ready for school? Back at the farm, 19-year-old Raven is preparing to return to university, having spent lockdown at home. I'm currently just packing up some of my stuff. I've left it, of course, to the very, very, very last minute. I've surprised myself with how much I enjoyed being back. I knew I was going to have a good time, but I've settled into it more than I thought I would. It's hard leaving them all and having to think Nikki's going to be the only person in the house. Can you put this in the boot for me? You take this. Can you put that in the car for me? Where do you think it goes? I'm going to turn then. No, you sort that out. <laughs> well done. Right, do you think we could fit? Right, I think you might have to move this. Do you know where I'm going, Nicky New? Mm -hmm. The universe? The universe or university? University. Do you know where, where my university is? Mm -hmm. Where is it? Mm, is it up or down? Down at York. What do you think, Nicky New? I'm going to go now back to uni and it's truly going to be you. What's that going to be like? Are you excited <laughs> to be on your own or are you going to be a little bit lonely without us? You bet, uni. Yes. Do you think we can shut the boot? With Raven off, it's the first day in six months that Clive is without all the kids by his side. Oh, it's quietly without them guys at home. It is, it's very strange, very strange. Because where's everybody gone? Where's Mally and Sid? And Edie. And <laughs> where are they? I think they're missing. They're missing? Yeah, they weren't in bed. I like it when they're all at home. But anyway, <laughs> it had to happen. You know, there's some stuff you can't teach them at home. So when we'd left with little Nancy, and so I guess it's her time in a way. She's the last one, so she's got to, she's got to spend the time with us. So it's, it's just me and you to finish this job, yeah? Think yeah. we can do it? Yeah. We had to do this. The family's cows will spend the harsh winter inside, so Clive's teaching four-year-old Nancy the importance of preparing for the cold months ahead. Winter comes early at Raven Seat, you know, our cows can be in in October. So we need to get on and get this done. But we will do. <laughs> now I've got Nancy on the case, 
Won't we, Nance? Uh, yeah. Exactly. These are the cows' beds, and they've got so smashed up over the time that we've decided we're going to dig them out, fill them full of stone again, and then concrete the top one. So we're cleaning up four towers? Oh, well, we had to get rid of all this muck. Yeah, four towers. And that's where Nanny comes in. Because the cows don't want to make a mess, because we need no. to make that... Cause exactly, Because yeah. we need to make that badgered up. Exactly. So now that all two of us have gone to school, that means me and you, mate, are going to spend, I think, a lot more time together, aren't we? Well... You're going to have to be me helper. Well, I know it's still too tired. You're going to school when you're bigger? Yes. Hi. But just for now, I'm going to educate you. In the yard, with shoveling. There's plenty of work still to do, so Amanda has another job for her very youngest. Will pet me! There you do it, watch. Oh, yes! You did good! You're hand feeding your chicken. Go on, hold it out for her. See if she'll come. Oh. Did you get your finger? <laughs> he needs it! <laughs> she's here, she's after you. It's four o'clock, and the school bus is winding its way back to the farm. Annie! Move! Move! See you in the morning, Annie. See ya. Oh, damn. Hey, Look. Come on, she's coming, skipping anyway. Well, she's That's, a That's a good sign. That's a good sign. Look what I got. Wow, Look did at you... that bag. Come on in then, let's have a chat. Did you have a nice yeah. day? Are you yeah, all right, it's bag? good. You have a smile on your face. There she's run, run. Right, come and sit down on the sofa. So, how was your first day at school? What have you been up to? Doing walk. What about new friends? Have you met some friends? Yeah. Was there some nice ones, little girls and boys? Yeah, and they were, and they wanted me to be my friend, so I'm their friend. Good. And did you have some dinner? Yeah. What did you have? So some biscuits, some piece of cake, and ham sandwich. Two ham sandwiches. Ham sandwiches. So it was nice. You had a good day. What's your teacher called? I don't know their names. Mrs. Walker. Are you, are you Walker? We name the three teachers. Was it a good first day? Do you feel tired? Yeah. Yeah, you will do. She huh? said she was excited to go back tomorrow. Good lad. Well, she's got a smile on her face, <laughs> haven't you? Yeah. Are you up for going tomorrow? Good. Good lad. Excellent. You look very smart. Thank you. Is she? Before the day's out, Clemmie's checking she's still in favour with a certain four-legged friend. <laughs> but I think he's definitely happy to see you back. Huh? I'm giving him some grass to eat. Oh, good lass, yeah. Huh? Mm, what could he like to eat? Come on, he's following you. <laughs> I told you he's missed you. Yeah. Good lass. He knows he likes daisies he will. to eat. He will. Oh, good lass. You see, he doesn't mind that you've gone to school. He gets it. Oh. Clemmie seems to have come back quite happy. She's got a smile on her face and she's, she doesn't seem too tired out, so I think she's going to chill out, have some tea, and I think you've got to say it's been a good day for her, so what more can you ask, really? It's mid-September in the Yorkshire Dales. Manasses. The family's herd has spent the summer grazing two miles away from the farmhouse. What? It's much better for them and for me if they'll just follow me home. But it is quite a trek. Right over there. Wow. 
So do your best, lasses. Away! Come on! Away! Come on! Away, lass. All right, my darling. Come on, they're doing really good. Ah, you're doing well. Come on! Come on! Away! 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 I thought they looked well. Good. As autumn is setting in and the nights are getting colder, it's time for the cows to be brought closer to home. Come on, lass. The cows are pregnant, so moving them to a field nearer the house will mean the family can keep a close eye on them. Moving the cows on foot is, yeah, I mean, it takes a little bit more time, but it's better for them, really, rather than loading them up into the trailer. Obviously, it's, um, it takes a bit more effort to go and have a look and see that they're OK when they're a couple of miles away. It just gets them a bit closer to home. Um, and then we can get them in, and they're also ready on hand for when that fateful day comes and we decide it's the start of winter and they need to come into the sheds. They'll come in, have their calves, and then head out again in the spring on grass day. Even in this remote part of the country, moving stock in the traditional manner can cause a tailback. How are we? We've quite a long, another hill to come up, so we just thought we'd let them have a rest before they set off again, so it doesn't hurt. You no need to, you know, let them catch the breath. And, uh, and then we'll set off again. Thank you. We used to walk cattle on the road a lot once upon a time. Folk, everybody did, but nowadays, it, it, so much traffic now that people don't. But we, we've always walked them, and uh, so we just do. It's taken nearly an hour to herd them along these country lanes. But they're now within sight of Raven Seat. How are you? Hey, come on. How are you? Hey, how are you? Come on, hey, how are you? Come on, hey, yeah. well, anyway, there's loads of grass for a little while, so that's good. And we've got them to where we need to be. It's been two days since the kids returned to school, and with only one child left on the farm, Clive is calling on his new chief assistant. Come on, Nan. <gasps> Jump. I've been holding up for you. Can you lift it, Nan? Uh, too heavy? No. Yeah, I think it is. What about I do that? What eh? about I spread it? What about I spread it? Put it in here. I want a bit for later. Yeah, I'll probably do. Come on. How it? How it? I let him come to it. Nancy has certainly become more vocal since Clemmy has left. She's absolutely talking a lot more, but she will have to because there's nobody there to, to translate what she means. So I think she's rather enjoying it, really. Right, next thing you have to do, you've got to count them. One, two, three, four. Just five. Play again, get every one. 16, 17, 19, 16, 17. How many? 16, one, two. And when you count, you start with number one. Start at number one. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Six. That'll do. Well done. That's the best counting you've done. Well done. She gets a bit of sort of um, individual attention, which, which has got to be good for her. But it also means she's got more to do, more responsibility, more work for Nancy. Before the cows can be moved into the barn, the family must stockpile several tons of straw. Well, I hope you two are feeling strong. Yeah, I'm feeling strong. Are you feeling strong, Nancy? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So, go? we'll go down to Riddlesea and get this straw. Yeah. If all goes well, we shall return this afternoon with, uh, with two massive loads of straw, perfectly dry. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the intention. So come on then, let's go. Come again. on then, let's do it. You go, your mum. Come on, you. Let's get you in. I'll go on my tractor. They're heading to a farm ten miles away in Kirby Stephen to collect this farmyard essential. 
got the trailer on, because what we're going to put in the back, we're putting in the trailer. And some of hay. Nearly straw. Now, this is oat straw we're going to go and get today. Oat straw. Oat straw. Because um, the farmer will have harvested the oats and the straw that's left behind, the stalks, will all have been baled up into little bales. And that's what we take home to bed the animals upon. Well done, you've made it, you two. Uh-huh. At last, come on, Nanny. So, we'll just start and, and see where we end up. Forecast saying that it's going to rain later on today, so we hopefully will get it on and get it home and get it in the barn before, before the rain comes. Amanda and Clive have 160 bales to load before the weather closes in. This is called buying your crop off the field. And obviously at Ravensea, we uh, don't grow any crops. We don't have any land that's suitable for arable. So we have to travel um, down to kinder climes to, to get straw. They might not have all nine kids on hand to help today, but their last little helper is keen to pull her weight. Pass that to me, Mum. I'll pass it to you. Good lad. Good lad, she's Go helping on, you. Up there. No, oh, never mind. <laughs> Push that bail in right hard. Push it. Go on, go on, charge. Go on. Go on. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Good lass. The challenges of farming stay the same, but family life is ever changing. So Clive's enjoying this quality time with his youngest. So whatever we do with all the kids we is, it'll be really strange when she goes to school and we haven't. She always carried them on her back when they were babies and I don't know how, because I couldn't stand it. I hated <laughs> carrying them, but, but she could carry them all day. So that meant they came. Squash down, Nancy. <laughs> Keep squashing it down. How do you hand? Right. Get up. Go on. He's not going anywhere. Go on. It's a 700-foot climb back to Ravenseat so the bales need to be secured to get the straw home and dry. Oh, we're just going to get the straps on because we've got quite a long journey and we've got a great big steep hill to go up. We need to make sure it's all strapped on. It's starting to rain, Dad. Don't talk about it, Nancy. All right, Mum. Are you putting another on or will that do? No, that's going to do. Right, fingers crossed. It's strapped on, it's going to rain. Grab them last few. I'm heading for the hills. Grab them last few. You mean yeah. you're setting off in your nice warm yeah. cab and I've got still got more straw That's to check. That's me, darling. All right. If I drop any off, pick them up. That has actually happened. It's a nerve-wracking 40-minute drive home for Clive and his precious cargo. to be in as quick as I can. Yeah. I think we were very lucky. I thought it was going to chuck it down. We've got it by the skin of our teeth. We've got it in. Yeah, yeah, that was so lucky. it's in now, so we can unload it at our leisure. It's safe now because yeah. it's all covered. Good, good, good. Oh, so no. We'll go and have a cup of tea, I think. Cool. Good. There's one more job Clive needs to tackle, now Clemmy's spending her days at school. Tony, my friend, because nobody's here, I'm in charge. I want full cooperation. No messing about, Tony. Tony. Come on, then. How are you, lad? Good lad, good lad. Good lad, good lad, good lad. Good lad. I think we'll quit with that, Tony lad. Come on. How are you? Come on. Come on. Good lad. I was asked if I could deal with this thing. It's something I don't do. And Tony knows that I don't. I don't think he's that happy with me looking after him, but he'll be happy with Nancy. Go on. Get him. Get him. 
right. Go on. Take that for him. And then we can tell Clem we've done, we've looked after him, can't we? Hello, Dad. Hello, Dad. And I like that look. Nancy doesn't mind helping out. She's keen to be outside. She likes looking after Joe, actually. I think she sees Joe as her pony. Oh, well, they're nice and dry and snug in here, aren't they? OK. Another school day is over, but homework takes on an extra meaning at Ravenseat. Ooh, what joint team effort. I like that. In typical Owen fashion, the family is pulling together to get the straw unloaded. Come on then, kids. How was your day at school today? Good. You enjoyed yourself? Yeah. Uh -huh. There's enough straw. I hope so. Well, you never know how much you're going to have to <coughs> use. I'll have you, Mummy. Yeah, yeah Mum. I like little bells. They're quite handy, aren't they? Aye. Yeah, they're easier to carry round. Exactly, they are. And it is comfy for them to sit on. You are quite right. Comfy for Tony and little Joe. Yep. Amanda and Clive are now one step closer to being prepared for the cold months ahead. So now it's here, it's pretty much safe. Absolutely. Winter will soon be here, and, and so you need to be ready. There is a, a cycle that in farming, isn't there, that maybe isn't in other things? No matter what's happening in the world, the seasons will come and go. That's it. It doesn't matter what else is going on, winter will come, spring will come, summer will come. It's the weekend at Ravenseat. After her first week at school, Clemmy is asking older sisters Edith and Violet for some extra tuition. So, what do you want to learn? Uh, I think write my name. That's a good idea, so here you go. So, first one, Kurt, looks like this. It's a sideways rainbow. Can you have a go doing that? Can you do it? That way, because we don't like, have that way. So, like, that. You have a go? Good. No, well, make sure you do, you do a curly bit on the top like that as well. Have a go? That's good. And Just... a bit on top. Well done. <laughs> I think that chicken's cheering you on, Tilly. <laughs> the children, they very much work together. This year has been a funny year because they spent a lot of time at home. But, yeah, they all help each other. They have to. They have to work together. No child is really a separate entity. It's everybody kind of piles in. They all help each other. I mean, sometimes, of course, there's a, the odd fight and altercation. But, but generally, they help and look after each other. And you've done it. You wrote your name. That's Kurtler uh, me. That's very good. Should we go show Mum and Dad? I'll carry that. Come on, then. I'll play the pen. Clemmy's got something to show you. What have you been doing? Writing. What? Writing? Writing my own name. Writing your own name? That's really good. You haven't really written that. Wait, she doesn't help. need any help either. Well, well then, Clem, you? show us how you do it. Give us another one. Do another one. Yep. Two rainbows. You can do that, can't you? That was very good. good. And again. Can you do that again? Another one. Clem. And then it's the uh, uh, I. Should I start that one again? No, no that's really it good. Looks good. You've done a good job of teaching her. Yeah. Perfect. Yay! Yeah. That's then... really good. Well, we call you Clemmy, but that's your actual full title. Clementine Dolores <laughs> Livingston I Owen. You, that's Wait, a look. long name to write, isn't did, it? Did you... No, that is my name, not... Well, that's Wait. the name that you'll use when you're a barrister, all right? Yeah. Clem for short, all right? 
The family's autumn jobs are in hand at Ravenseat. But there's still plenty of work next door at the small farm the family bought earlier in the year. Come on down to this barn. Perfect, that's good. The family has started to graze sheep on the land and plan to winter a small herd of cows here too. Well, certainly what you I saw one, but it's not quite as few. We're just down at um, one of these new barns at Auntie John's because in order to be able to use these barns in the winter, well, they need cleaning out. Exactly. I love it in here. What? Spooky. Screwed up at the top. Right, well, we can So talk. we'll just carry it out, this hair. So you all grab an arm. Miley. OK. You, can you take some? Take that out. Don't put it down, just keep all of it till I come. Good little sheltering right, place, isn't it? It's actually very watertight, isn't it? It's nice and cosy. And on a bad day, at lambing time, um, or through the winter, this is a good place for, the, for you to keep your animals. You know, it's good. It's quite light as well, actually, isn't it? The 400-year-old barn is a traditional cow house with wooden panels used to divide the stalls. OK, do you want to take that piece of wood? That can go as well. Any bits of string, they need to go. And as they clear it out, Amanda finds evidence of its past. Now look, can you see that? That goes round the cow's neck, OK? Why do you think it had this? Because to hold it still and it, and it don't uh, stand and put a foot and then you, are right. and then you milk it and I don't know if they use this bucket to milk it. Why does it need to move up and down? So they can lie down. And yeah, so the cow, when it's laid down, it goes down and when the cow stands up, it slides up. Right, well, seeing as you've all worked quite hard and, and we've got a lot of it done, I think we should have a cup of tea now. And uh, I think Sydney's in charge of brewing tea. Having taught the kids about the history of the land, Amanda and Clive's thoughts drift to the future. To do and it'll take a long time, but one day it'll be back to its former glory with its lovely house and all these barns all repaired and all the walls back up. And that'd be good, won't it? You know, whenever we've got a bit of time, we'll just come back here and keep doing a little bit more, you know. Exactly. Yeah. You know? There's lots and lots to do. It would take us years, probably. Years. You know, these things take time. Just a project that'll just go on and on. So, well, we've got plenty of manpower, haven't we? Hmm. Hmm? Exactly. We've got a touch of normality back at the moment. Raven's back at uni. So, for as long as that lasts, who knows? But for now, it's wonderful to see. They're all growing up into their own little people and, and getting their own personalities and, and, yeah, it's a lovely thing to watch. You just have to stop and think, you know, now and again, how, how lucky you are, really, to have them. It's all progressing and, and we just have to wait and see and watch and learn them all we can. Next time, the family prepares for winter earlier than usual. You need to be ready for when that bad forecast comes. Violet's pet calf grows out of control. It's Kira being in again. <coughs> what does she get this time? This sock. sock. And the family tries to book a builder for their derelict farmhouse renovation. There's a few problems to tackle. We have no electricity, we have no water supply. Don't worry about the water. I am worried. I am worried. <laughs> <laughs>